Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've seen a number of these types of problems involving distance, velocity, and time, let's now review the general approach of how to solve these types of problems. We realize that the one equation that combines all three variables is the one that says that distance equals velocity times time, but notice that very same equation can be solved for the velocity, which then is distance over time, or time, which is equal to distance divided by velocity. All we have to do to solve for velocity is move the t in the denominator over here, turn the, turn the equation around, or to solve for t, move the v in the denominator and turn the equation around. So you can see it's easy to derive any one of those three equations. Now, if we're in a situation where the distance is not known, what we can then do is come up with an equation where we said distance 1 equals distance 2. Typically, there are two different rates or two different people or two different modes of movement that causes a different velocity in each case. And if we know that the distance traveled by boat is the same, if we then, but we don't know the distance, then we can set them equal to each other and replace distance by velocity times time that then eliminates the need to know the distance because now we have an equation where distance is no longer a factor. Or, if we know the total distance, then sometimes we can set up an equation where we sum up the two distances, which we don't know what they potentially are, so we can call them x and the total distance minus x, and then set that equal, the sum of that equal to the total distance that is known, and then replace the two distances we don't know by their equivalence, velocity times time. So again, it's all about finding an equation, one of those three equations, in such a way that we can eliminate what is not known. We don't know the distance, so therefore we change it to an equation like this, or we know the total distance and we can write the equation like this. There's also the possibility that we don't know what the time is. We don't know how much each person or each mode of movement, how much time that took. So again, we could write an equation where time one equals time two, and since time is distance divided by velocity, we can write that as distance one over velocity one equals distance two over velocity two. That again, eliminates the time, we don't need to know what it is, and we can solve the equation like this. Or, if we know the total time, we can then write t1 plus t2 equals t total, and then notice that t1 again can be replaced by this, t2 can be replaced by this, and now we have an equation that doesn't require either one of the individual times. Sometimes we know there's a relationship between the first time and the second time in the terms of the delta between them, the difference. So whenever we talk about the difference or delta, that means that we know how much more time it took for one versus the other or how much less time. And then we can simply write an equation where time one is equal to time two plus some difference between the two or minus some difference depending upon which way you want to write it. So those are the general ways in which to solve these types of questions. You can go back and look at the previous examples and we're going to do a few more examples to show you how to employ some of these equations and then it'll hopefully make a little more sense. That is how it's done.